First of all, I would like to really thank Aubrey and the Science Foundation for uh, giving me the opportunity to talk about our work on um, aging single cell metalums. Um, to give a brief overview about what I will be talking about today, I'm sure you are a bit tired. Um, I will talk about DNA methylation. I will try to define uh, what are epi mutations and why it's important to study them. And I will introduce our novel method to detect AB mutation by looking at DNA methylation at the single cell level and talk about possible applications in particular related to aging. For those who are not really familiar, DNA methylation is one of the most common epigenetic modifications. It occurs in cytosine CG denucleotide. And it has been shown that um, hypermethylated promoter regions are associated with gene silencing, while hypomethylated with um, gene expression. And this is in part due to the fact that methyl groups interfere with the binding of transcription factors to the promoter regions. <laughs> Now, during aging, uh, we speculate that DNA methylation changes occur, and in a simplified way, we can say that uh, we had two types of changes, the systematic ones and the stochastic, and the systematic occurs when all the cells tend to undergo to the same changes, generating an homogeneous gene expression profile. And we speculate that those uh, changes are actually functional and uh, as a response of mechanism of adaptation. So in theory, we don't really worry much about this. What we worry more are the stochastic ones that occur when the cells undergo two different changes, but in a very a random uh, fashion. So you can imagine if each cell starts to accumulate errors <laughs> in this case at the DNA methylation level, we will have a very heterogeneous scenario where they start to do different things and, um, and generate a, what we call transcriptional noise. And in this situation where all the cells start to be very chaotic, uh, you can imagine that the function of the organ will be affected. So this lead really to our main question is, do epi mutations accumulate with age? And are, there, are they a driver for aging? So this has been really an open question, and it has not really been possible so far to study epi mutations uh, and answer these questions because of the lack of really uh, tech, the lack of technology. So basically, to study DNA methylation, current technology requires millions of cells. But to really um, detect epi mutation, we must look at the level of single cell. And I want to stress this concept. So basically, if you take a pool of cells and you apply current technology, what you get is an, an average of the signal. So you miss all the information about individual cells that they may be very different from each other. So only looking at individual cells you can address the question whether epimutations accumulate uh, with aging. And um, um, part of my work has been really focusing on developing novel methods to detect DNA methylation at the level single cell and to assess the random accumulation of those alterations uh, in the epi epigenome with age. Um, I want to introduce the, the methods right now, and basically, one of the most way, common ways to study DNA methylation consists in treating the DNA with bisulfite, <laughs> which converts unmethylated cytosines into uracil, while methylated cytosines remain unchanged. But one of the problems of bisulfite treatment is that uh, it's a very harsh treatment. So DNA tends to be easily degraded. So we really need to find a balance between having the DNA too degraded but converted uh, if treatment is too harsh or having DNA not really fully converted but not degraded if the treatment is too mild. So we try to find a balance between these two and um, eventually we finalize the methods which I'm summarizing here. Um, so we take a single cell, we perform the naturation of the single cell DNA, 
Next step is a bisulfite conversion followed by a whole genome amplification. And now you can follow two ways, depending on what you're mostly interested. Uh, the locus-specific approach allows us to target only regions of interest, or the genome-wide approach uh, using next-generation sequencing. And I will focus right now on uh, locus-specific and talk about genome-wide later. So again, um, we take a single cell, the naturated DNA, bisulfite conversion, and all genome amplified DNA is subjected to a conversion specific PCR, which allows us to amplify um, regions of interest that are fully converted, and the applicants are then subjected to sequencing analysis. And here I'm showing an example of uh, our data on um, an F2 promoter, which is hypomethylated, and we looked at, in this case, a single hepatocyte. I highlighted here cytosine in CG denucleotide, and you can see that all the C are converted into T. That means that those are hypomethylated cytosines. And I'm highlighting here, this is a cytosine that is uh, not converted, so it means it's methylated. And this is an example of a methylating epimutations, and here as well. And um, same, it's another example for, in this case, a hypermethylated promoter. And you can see that the C are not converted into T, so it means it's fully methylated. And here it's an example of a, a demethylating epimutation, here and here. So, and also I want to point out that all the C non-CG denucleotide that are usually uh, hypomethylated in differentiated cells are converted into T. So there is um, a full conversion of non-CG de uh, denucleotide sites. Um, so we looked at promoters of different genes um, in young and old mice. And here I'm summarizing some data that we obtained. And you can see that uh, those data on the promoters are showing that um, there is a tendency of accumulating uh, mutations in the old mice. But it's not definitely significant. But we also started to wonder whether uh, looking at promoter regions is just very, very narrow. We want to really um, moved forward towards a more genome-wide approach. So we uh, worked on um, what is called reduced representation, uh, genome-wide bisulfite um, method. And um, basically, we take uh, the single cell, all genome amplified DNA, and we digest with an enzyme it's called MSC1 uh, that, that cuts in TTAA. Um, this, is, this step is, uh, is done to generate fragments. And those fragments will be then um, subjected to library preparation and site selection and sequencing with Illumina. Um, I want to um, clarify a bit the experimental design. Basically, what we do is we take the pool of cells and we apply our method to generate a reference metallum and from the same pool cell, we will pick individual cells that are subjected to the same uh, approach that I just explained. And what we do is we compare the single cell metallum with the reference. And this is what we give us the single cell epimutation spectrum and the epimutation rate. So we started looking at uh, hepatocytes of young mice. And, um, those are the first data that we obtain. Uh, there are a few things that I want to point out. Uh, first of all, uh, you can see that the methylating epimutations are much more common than methylating ones. And this is a really novel finding because nobody really so far has been able to characterize the epimutations. And then uh, also what is interesting is that uh, gene and repeats seems to be much more unstable than CPG island and promoters. And also that if you look at those, this is an example of four single cells, there is an homogeneous profile. So all the cells seem to show that gene and repeats are very unstable and promoters and CPG islands 
tends to be more stable. So then we decided to look at uh, some more um, cells and we obtained uh, similar results. And we extended the study to um, hepatocytes from old mice to start to address our question. And uh, here I'm showing some um, preliminary data on um, old hepatocytes. And here you can see uh, how the scenario is, is quite different. So first of all, there is a great heterogeneity between cells. So uh, some ha have high happy mutations, some less. And um, what you can also notice is that uh, there, the gene repeats that seems to be um, more unstable in the single cell, that homogeneous pattern is completely lost. And I'm summarizing here to simplify a bit uh, these, um, these results. Um, what is interesting is really that uh, the methylating AP mutation and methylating AP mutations seems to accumulate uh, in old mice. And th there is a head very high cell-to-cell -cell variability, which is in theory what you would expect, but uh, it's uh, not significant. Uh, significant, statistical significant. Uh, this is very preliminary, so we need to do much more cells and much more mice, so it's not a very conclusive um, answer. Definitely uh, we will do more mice, and we are actually now starting to look at uh, neurons, which is our main interest. Um, and um, I have some conclusions from, for this. Uh, so to study DNA methylation in aging, at single cell level, we developed a novel bisulfite-based me method. And we can really look at uh, promoter regions or target regions of interest or look at genome-wide. Um, the genome-wide approach, um, it's actually a reduced representation approach, suggests that genome-wide patterns of DNA methylation can be analyzed as single cell. And what we see is that AP mutation rates really vary considerably across the genome and from cell to cell, that there is a tendency of um, accumulating AP mutation uh, during aging, and, and a great heterogeneity during aging, but again, it's uh, very preliminary, and we are uh, extending this study. And if you're interested in the applications, um, aging is not the only application of this method. There is so much more that can be done, and it will be interesting to, to explore, from stem cell work to microenvironment-driven cancer cell heterogeneity and circulating tumor cells and cell-to-cell um, uh, -cell variability in immune response. So it will be really interesting to see what's coming up next. And um, I would like to thank all the members of the Bike Lab uh, and also our um, epigenomic and genomic core, and a big thank to Akim and Kemal that uh, they have been working on the computational aspect of this project, and actually Kemal Hackman is uh, at the conference, so if you have more um, computational-related questions, I'm sure he will be happy to answer, and they have done really an amazing work, and very thankful to them. And um, the project has been sponsored by Science Foundation, NIA, and AFR. And I want to thank you for uh, your attention, and uh, with this very nice quote that I like a lot. Thank you.